All right, welcome to lesson two. We're gonna practice a couple very basic techniques. Um, we just finished our mixing chart. We have a great idea of what our um, Castle Valley palette looks like from our Art of Soil uh, Ecopod paints. Um, that was really great. And now we are gonna um, practice a couple different techniques that will help you better understand how the watercolor works and how it reacts. Um, if you recall your high school science class and the power of diffusion, um, water will always move to an area with less concentration. So um, it always just wants to reach a state of equilibrium. So we can see that when we grab a little bit of pigment here and it will start to travel down the... the the area that's wet. The water is just trying to reach a state of equilibrium. Um, so that's important to remember when you're watercolor painting is you wanna work with the water. And um, an example of this is, I now have a fairly wet brush with pigment on it. It's about the same concentration as the water and pigment combo here on the paper. However, if I dry my brush, you can see I've Darwin, um, I've, dump, I've dumped a bunch of water and pigment there. My brush is now drier than the paper. So I can actually pick up a bit of that pigment and that works in your favor if you've made a mistake or you're not happy with the intensity of the painting. Um, you know, you could add more water at this point and mix it back up. You can um, dry off your brush and use it to blot some of that color up um, or even kind of blot out a mistake. So it'll depend on the type of pigment that you've got as well as your paper. Um, you might not get this great of results with a different pigment or a different paper, but um, that's one pretty cool trick with watercolor is you're just working with the water to, um, to, to change the intensity and, and mix of whatever it is that's on your brush. So there's a few different techniques with watercolor. We've got wet on dry and wet on wet. So um, let's experiment with this. Wet on dry is just as it sounds. We're going to be using our wet watercolors on dry paint and you'll see that behaves quite a bit differently than when we wet the paper first and then add wet watercolors. So to experiment with this, let's mix up some color. I really loved this dark purple pigment that we got from mixing our Moab palette. Um, it was this guy and this guy. So I'm gonna mix up a little pile of that, but you can choose your own adventure here. Again, remember adding more water will lessen the intensity of the paint. So I'm gonna go for a fairly intense mix here and clean your brush before you add it back to your paint here. That'll keep your paints in good shape. And I'm gonna mix that up pretty nice. So there we have it. I've got my wet paint, my wet brush, and my dry paper. So we're just going to uh, add that in and you see how um, the paint isn't really traveling over the page. It's pretty much sticking where I have uh, placed it with my brush. It's not helter skelter, you know, exploring the page or the, the water where the water's been, which is what we'll see here with this wet on wet. So um, you'll see that as I add more pigment, it's only traveling where I've already painted, where the paper is already wet. So this gives you a finer degree of control. It's great if you're working with details or um, are painting a small area. This wet on dry technique will work great. Um, one thing that might be fun here is I'm gonna just pop in there and you can kind of see that the water starts to travel. So, um, 
It'll just depend on how much, how wet your paper is, how wet your brush is. I had quite a bit of water on that brush, so you can see the water is starting to um, lessen the intensity of the red paint or the purple paint where I added it. So that's kind of some fun, it's, it's a fun technique to experiment with because that's how you can add color gradations, shadows, etc. So um, that is wet on dry. And next we'll work with some wet on wet. I'm gonna mix up this blue and number three here because I thought that was a really beautiful color of gray. So mix up whatever color is suiting your fancy in this moment. Um, now I'm gonna add some of this gray. Oh wait, and it wasn't gray. I'm making gray. I'm going to add this guy. Excuse my dyslexia. So there's that beautiful gray. I think that is just fabulous. So now I'm gonna take some clean water. Again, I'm pretty sloppy here, so it just depends on what, what your style is, but I'm pretty loose with my water jugs. Um, and I'm just going to wet the outline of this box here. Um, one cool technique is if you hold this up to eye level, you can really see where the water is. So if you're using wet on wet, um, hold that paper up to eye level and you can really get a great grasp on which areas of the paper you've wetted. So um, you shouldn't see like a bubble of water, but it should appear shiny to your eye when held up. So if, you, if you're actually seeing water with like surface tension, you've probably got too much. And in that case, wipe off your brush and suck up a little bit of it to make sure that you've got kind of a, a damp paper, but not a soaking wet paper. So for wet on wet, you'll see that the color, the pigment travels much further afield as I add, um, as I add pigment here. So it's a little more flowy. Um, it's kind of fun to uh, this is a this tends to mix quite a bit more. So if you're working on a gradient or um, Kind of just a looser style. This might be fun um, Because it, the, the pigment does move around quite a bit more and another thing is you can actually Control that a bit by tilting your paper So that's wet on wet and then we're gonna practice with a quick, quick flat wash really quick. Um, that is great for doing something like a sky or a background. If I was painting a forest and was planning on um, painting some trees in the foreground, I could paint a flat wash in the background, um, much like this, and wait for that to dry and then paint the trees. So it's, great. it's a great technique for painting backgrounds or skies. Um, so I'm gonna mix up a little bit of blue here and we'll practice a flat wash. Okay, so as I, it might be easier to move your paper, which is nice if you don't have it taped down. We are gonna tape down our scenes, but for now we're just, we're pretty informal here. We're just learning, so we're not taped down. So you can move it as you please and just paint a horizontal um, line here. So you'll, you'll see that there is more water wherever my brush goes. That's called a bead. And you can chase that bead around and use it to create a more even wash. So my bead is right here. I'm gonna load my brush back up and continue going. And that will help you avoid getting, you know, like big lines or uneven distribution. So there's my bead. I'm gonna go pick up more paint and I'm just gonna steer him down the page. The goal here is to create a totally even wash that um, we're gonna do a graded wash here, but I'm doing a totally even wash that I want to just, um, it's uniform, there's no lines. I don't have any change in color intensity. Um, and that is how you work with the bead to achieve that. 
And then once you get to the bottom of the page, I still got that here, you can pick it up with your brush. And that's just a, a nice, flat, even wash. Now if I wanted to, oftentimes the horizon line of a out, outside scene or landscape will have less pigment than the sky overhead. So you can actually pick up some of that pigment to create a bit of a graded wash. Um, again, that's just playing with the different properties of the paint and the diffusion of the water. So we can lightly pick some of that up to create more of a graded wash like you would see in a landscape painting. So that is a flat wash and we kind of finished it up with a little bit of a graded wash at the end. Oops, classic. You're not, a, you're not a true artist until you have paint on your hand. Um, so now we're official. So salt is a pretty cool trick that I enjoy just making kind of atmospheric um, or like it works really great if you're trying to paint trees or vegetation. Um, just the kind of weird, almost I would say kind of, <laughs> uh, I don't know, my grandma used to do this and I thought it was kind of corny, but I find that I use this technique um, quite a bit now in painting landscapes. So I'm gonna work wet on wet. You can choose your own adventure here. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna mix up a kind of atmospheric color and try and replicate snow. I'm really loving this um, blue and green mix. So I'm gonna go for that. Um, right here. And mix up kind of a atmospheric, snowy sky color. I'm just going to spread this fairly evenly across the page. And get some good distribution here with my snowy sky. This is a little bit on the green side for snow, but that's okay. You'll get the idea. So once I have the um, paint all spread out where I want it, I'm going to add some salt. And the salt will react with the water to create some kind of cool patterns. So sprinkle some salt on there. Um, and then we're just gonna let it dry. We'll, we'll um, brush it off once it's done here, but um, for now, we'll just let that be and uh, <laughs> let it do its magic. So now for a graded wash, this works well for sunsets and sunrises. For that reason, I'm gonna stick with a red and a yellow. So I'm gonna mix some of those up. I want it fairly intense because I want to show you guys how this works. And I will say, these are kind of tricky, so be very forgiving with yourself. Feel free to try in this space if you don't get your the result you were hoping for. They require a lot of practice, and I'm honestly <laughs> a little nervous about screwing this tutorial up because they are easy. They, are, they do require some practice. They do require a little bit of um, a little bit of finesse. So if we mess this up, it's all good. We can practice right here. That's why I've left this space. So um, I'm gonna start with red and I, you can do this either way in terms of wet on wet or wet on dry. I've done both ways. I still feel that I'm kind of torn with what technique works best. Um, let's try a wet on wet for now. And if we don't, if we don't get a result that we're loving, we can give it a, another try with um, wet on dry right next door here. So I'm just adding a good amount of water to this square. I suppose that's a rectangle. Um, and we're just cruising here. Again, you can hold that up to eye level and, and check the distribution. I, I see I've missed a couple spots here. 
and um, because I've added so much water, I'm gonna just double check that I don't have too much. I do have like a pretty good sized water bubble down here. So I'm gonna dry off my brush and kind of pick up a little bit of that water. You can even use the corner of your towel too. That's a great, you can see the water traveling up that towel. That works well also. So what we're doing is we want the color to be most intense up here and then we're meeting in the middle with kind of a less intense band of color in the middle. So I'm gonna start out here with my yellow at the bottom. And I can already tell I've got a little bit too much water on here. But we're slowly working with that bead again to carry the pigment up towards the center. You can see that it's quite a bit more intense at the bottom versus the middle where I'm working towards. So I'm feeling like I have too much water on this page. I'm gonna dump that and try and pick up a little bit of that water and distribute it on my towel here. So I'll do the same thing with my red pigment here. Now this one's gonna be a little bit harder to work with because it is, um, it's quite a bit more intense in terms of its, its staining power. It's got quite a bit more oomph than that yellow we were working with. Um, so we'll see how this goes. We'll, we'll just keep trucking. And as you can see, this is perfectly exemplifying the, the um, serendipitous nature of the watercolor paint. We're not. We're not gonna be able to control the outcome. We're just along for the ride. So we're gonna see what happens and um, see if we enjoy the result. I'm, I'm kind of liking where this is going. I am trying to avoid lines, um, which is sort of working for me now, but it's not great. So I'm gonna keep bringing some of this red pigment down into the yellow. And there you have it, a graded wash. So I'm feeling okay about that. Um, another way to do this is the wet on dry, as I mentioned. So let's get, give that a go over here. I'm gonna mix up, let's say I wanna do a nice twilight sky. So I'm gonna mix up a little more of my blue pigment here. And again, no guarantees that this works out. I find these very challenging so some of them look great some of them look terrible and it's just being here for the process and learning something each time so i'm gonna mix up some purple here i really love this purple color from the the death valley artists palette it's a little bit less staining you'll see it takes more pigment to create a mix than that red one did so um, I'm just grabbing a little bit more pigment here and mixing it up nicely with the water. All right, so for a wet on dry attempt, I will wet my brush, gather some pigment, and we'll see how we go. Again, remember that bead I mentioned, the little, the little drop where the majority of the water and pigment collects? We're working with that again. So you might wanna turn your paper as you work. I find that's helpful. Um, grab more pigment and make our way down the page here. And you'll see you'll kind of, the bead kind of begins to run out. So that's the point at which you recharge your brush. You can see the water is, or the water and the pigment are moving back up where I had less water and pigment before. So now at this point, I'm gonna grab some purple and we'll see how it goes. Bring this down. And the key is to work while it's still wet. The second this begins to kind of solidify and dry, then it's all over. We don't have the opportunity to go back and 
um, move the pigment around, it's, 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 it's a done deal. So one of the tricks of watercolor is working quickly and kind of understanding the different properties of the paint in its different states of drying. You know, were this sopping wet, I would have a bit more opportunity to, um, and time to work with that. But because we're working with wet on dry, that drying time is reduced. So I don't have a ton of time to work with this. Um, I'm trying to go from blue to purple to blue, back to blue. So um, we still have a little time here to work while our paint is wet, but that window is rapidly, <laughs> rapidly narrowing here. So. Yeah, you can kind of see I've got a gradient here from blue to purple to blue. Um, another thing you could do is mix up blue, purple, and then mix blue and purple here and go from blue to blue, purple to purple. And that would create a very nice gradient as you're working there. But um, hopefully this just gives you a quick intro to some like very basic techniques that will make you more successful with watercolor. As you can see, I just dripped some water here. And that's a great example of this paint, this paint was mostly dry. I added completely wet water and it's created a bloom there where um, there's a difference in, in the state of the, the dry paint versus where I've added wet paint. So a bloom will happen uh, if you add a bit of wet to the paint that's already mostly dry. So blooms are great in some circumstances, in others you're gonna wanna avoid them. It might be too late for me to fix this, but let's let's just see what happens. Um, looks like I I think the paper was wet enough for me to fix that. So that's one thing to be aware of as you're adding a bunch of water to a painting that's mostly dry. You can end up with a situation like that that's called a bloom. So all it is is practice understanding how much water your brush has versus how dry the paper is, and the only way to uh, practice with that really is to spend some time with your paints. So I was eager to brush the salt off but it's not quite dry yet so I'm gonna pause the video and we'll come back once the paper is dry. As you can see this is dried quite a bit. You want it to be totally dry before you wipe off your salt. But it'll kind of leave a cool pattern this one's not as dramatic as I had hoped. It's a very, very fine salt that I've used. Um, you might have better luck with sea salt, but it will leave like a cool feathery pattern um, that's reminiscent of snow or vegetation. This is really, really pretty underwhelming, but um, try a coarser sea salt and that might come out more like what I was hoping. But it is, it is textured and kind of interesting, so. We won't call that a total loss, but give, um, give sea salt a try. Maybe if you have more space right here, you can try some sea salt. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us. That was lesson one and then two. And uh, we are going to start next on our desert and mountain scene. So click into lesson three to get started on that.